Hello, today's Bible study is for the Bible study that will be on 113. Um, and the Pathway book is called Humility and Love. Devotional reading is Proverbs 327 through 35, and the background scripture and the printed passage passage is James um, chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, and they read as follows. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor in the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and well. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. Now, as we look into this, James is talking to the Jewish converts and probably the non-converted um, when he says what causes fights and quarrels among you because they were fighting in the church they were having wars um, and when he says wars do um, you have to remember the Jewish people back then the Jewish Christians in regards to their wars they were people who were a very rebellious group uh, with verbal outland out lashes at the Romans but also internally and this one speaks to their internal wars they had many fights among themselves first and then outwardly with other Christians and it was against the things that they were doing wrong and they were falling in these quarrels that they shouldn't be in and it tells you right here it says don't they come from your desires that battle within you so with any quarrel the true quarrel starts within oneself and then becomes external when our conflict is lost to the flesh so if we lose to the flesh that's when our conflict reaches out or when we come out in a bad way that is when we give into the flesh the spirit will direct you away from the flesh which will make you an enemy of the world um, but when you give into the flesh then you give into this world James refers to the disputes of church members as wars and fighting internally that leads to externally having bad ways. Um, 2 Corinthians 7 5 says, For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn. Conflicts on the outside, fears within. The conflicts were on the outside because we were having problems internally, we had no rest. But we harassed at every turn. We were harassed at every turn. Here is something that was spoken of because of our internal wars in 2 Timothy 2 and 23. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. Well, here's another thing. Why get into something that you know is going to produce a quarrel? Avoid these things. You, you don't shove the Lord down somebody's throat. You don't tell somebody this and that. If they don't want to listen, move on. If you ever notice, Jesus was always moving on. After he dropped the message, he was gone. It was up to you to accept it or not accept it. And then Titus speaks to us in regards to avoid these things. Titus 3 and 9 says, But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law, the word, because these are unprofitable and useless. James is truly asking a rhetorical question here, and he will answer it shortly in verse 2. The real situation is how do you resolve these matters spiritually? 
We don't want to give into the world. We need to give into the will of the Lord. This is a war that every Christian must win. We must beat the flesh. This war is caused by evil influence. You desire, but do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. The first part of verse 2 does not speak to kill as murder, as in murder, but more like hatred from envy. If you look at the verse, it states you covet. So you are envying something, and that makes you quarrel and fight. The fact that you are selfish and and self-imposed with pride in their ways is the reason that they can't ask God because they're going against God in their ways. Man, when we go, when we try to do man's ways, we will always go against God. And if you are envying or coveting somebody else, you are going against God's ways. Be happy for your brothers and sisters, whatever they may have. It could be more than you. It could be less than you. But even if it's less, don't worry. The Lord has his own blessing for you. And it may not be to be a millionaire. It may not be to have the biggest house, but it could be just to have good health all your life. It could be to wake up and have a long life. It could be to wake up and minister to somebody who is in need like you are, and they see how the Lord is working through you, and you are still happy and faithful to God, even in any circumstance. You never know. Selfishness and self-indulgence will dry, will dry up prayer. Also, the coveting means that someone else has something that someone wanted. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. First and foremost, as soon as it said your pleasures, it wasn't of God. So your prayers couldn't be answered. God does answer prayers, and I'm going to give you a few and tell you a few. First of all, 1 John 5, 14 through 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that He that we have what we asked of him. But these people could not get their prayers answered, as it's stated in the verses above, because of their motives, because they were looking at self pleasures. God will not answer a prayer giving into self-gratification. The ones that he does here are, and I'll give you a few examples, you can look for righteous, and that's in the book of Psalm 34 and 15. A prayer of truth, that's in Psalm 145, 218. Um, penitent or repent, Luke 18 and 14. Ask in his name, John 14 and 13. Ask believing, Mark 11 and 24, um, according to God's will. And we just read that, 1 John 5, 14 through 15. But the Lord will not answer a selfish and prideful prayer. Your motives have to be right in order for a prayer to be answered. Verse 4 says, you adulterous people, don't you know the friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You don't want to be an enemy of God. And when it speaks to adulterers here, it is in regards to unfaithfulness to God. Spiritual adultery is a spiritual adultery is the unfaithfulness of the church. And remember, the church is the bride of Christ. So you have to be faithful. 2 Corinthians 11.2, you can read it, Romans 7, 1 through 6. Revelation has it all throughout, 21 and 2, 22, 17. And I will read you Revelation 21 and 2. I saw the whole city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. The part that speaks of being a friend of the world refers to Christians loving the way of the world, and if you love the ways of the world, then you can't love God because the world is enmity to the Lord. John 15 and 18 says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. 
You think you got a problem with hate? Jesus even healed two men with demons in them in a graveyard and sent the demons into the pigs. And they got mad at him for sending the demons in the pigs. They missed the whole entire healing process of the fact that he took these demons out of these men so they could live normal lives. They hated Jesus because they put him on the cross. He was too perfect. He was too good and he loved too much and too many. He was here for the poor and the rich thought he was here to make them richer. He was humble. He was obedient. He was faithful to the end. So don't think you won't have a problem. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? This should be a capital S because the spirit here was that was left to dwell in us is the Holy Spirit. The scripture does not lie is what is being said here. The scripture tells the truth all the time. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his. So you are already taken care of, but you have to accept that whole verse. That's all yours. But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. You know God always seems to work with the least. Proverbs 3.34 says he mocks proud, mo proud mockers but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. Once again, the least. The Lord mocks the proud, and if you don't have a true understanding of the strength of the word mock, it is synonymous with ridicule or to treat with contempt. But the Lord shows favor to the humble and oppressed, as stated last week when we said the Lord never starts with the greatest will be first, or the greatest of you Little children will inherit heaven because the Lord loves a humble spirit. You can read Isaiah 57 and 15, but it speaks to being exalted. And you will see what it says. So please read 57 and 15. But also look at what it says to do if you have humility. And this is in Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Look at Jesus' walk. Look at his miracles. Look at his parables. Look at the blessings that he bestowed upon people. Look at his teachings. And everything that he ever did was love for someone else and obedience to his Father every time. So don't get weary about having humility because what it is telling you is to treat God's children correctly and you will find favor with the Lord. The totality of this verse comes from 1 Peter 5 and 5 and it starts off speaking of being humble and to, to submit yourself to elders. And it says, in the same way you who are younger submit yourselves to your elders, all of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. If you realize that submitting shows the true commitment to someone because you are inclined to do as they say, we should always submit to the Lord. And with this war that they were fighting inside themselves, they needed to submit to the will of the Holy Spirit. The verse states to also clothe yourself with humility. And that means put it on like a fresh pair of whatever you wear daily and wear them. This humility also has a purpose and it is to go out to one another and that is another reason it should be fresh because yesterday's humility might be dirty and used and you don't want to get caught with the holy and dirty humility. Humility needs to be fresh every day. My grandparents used to say make sure you put on good underwear in case you get in an accident Hey, put on fresh humility today in case you get in an accident. 
Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is the part that they are having a huge problem with because the Lord solves conflict. But the truth of the matter is, if you were in your spiritual mind, these conflicts would not arise. And if you know that you are at war internally, because we are told that the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war, so we know there's a war going on with us. If you look at Galatians 5, 16, and 17, it says, So I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. So if you have a conflict slash war, then know that you should have enough humility to stop fighting by yourself and turn to the Lord. Now this means no pride. This means humbleness. This means obedience. This means repent. Or in short, just submit yourself to the will of God, and in your humility, you will see God's love come through for you. But in doing that, then you have a responsibility to pass the same mercy and grace to someone else, because grace is a gift. Ephesians 2 and 8 tells you that, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God. And you are supposed to share your gifts from God, because that is how you make disciples, and a disciple can only be known by their love, and love is an action, and submission, and servitude, which deals with having the humility of God, because you have to remember all that he has done for you. Ephesians 4.32, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you which starts back on the path of humility and love again. Now, if you're doing all of that, then you won't have any time for the devil. But resist the devil at all times. And remember when John came, when John came out of the wilderness preaching, he was preaching repent. And Jesus was preaching repent. When you repent, it is because you have gone against God. In layman's terms, you have given in to Satan's or the world's ways. How do you resist Satan? By doing God's will. Verse 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Wow, that's just a strong verse. Remember that the nearness you get, you have to the Lord gives you strength. But it also opens up more temptation because you are standing out in the world that does not want you to follow God's ways. As we said, spirit and flesh are contrary one to the other. Or being a friend to the world is enmity to God. So be careful here because this is when you should have been more humble. And the Lord works in you and protects you. Remember that we have been brought near to the Lord because of the blood. And if you sing the song about the powers in the blood, then you know its power is that it puts us closer to the Lord. Ephesians 2.13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. This is a prime example of humility and love because Jesus did not have these internal wars. He submitted himself totally to his Father's will, and he did great things because in that submission, you gained favor. And who can give out better favor than God Almighty? Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Verse 9. This verse is a stern warning. Some unsaved persons may indeed laugh, but let them recognize their separation from God, and their laughter will be replaced with weeping and mourning. The mourning that is being spoke of here conflicts you. The mourning mentioned both by Jesus and James is that godly sorrow which produces repentance and without which salvation is not promised. Look at Luke 13, 13. Verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. This is a statement for the converted and unconverted to get rid of this pride thing, which will stop you from having that relationship and lead to every internal war. If you humble yourself, it is said that you will be exalted. Read Matthew 23 and 12. And you may ask, what is this exalted? Read Romans 6 and 4. 
But the true exaltation shall come at Judgment Day, and all this starts with humility and love. Amen.